On June 16, 2009, Arthur Kinsella and his son Brian arrived at Rosses Point Beach just after 6am. Brian was training for a triathlon, so ran on ahead, but his father had noticed something odd to his right. Arthur headed towards rocks, and as he got closer, quickly realised what the unfamiliar object he had seen in the distance was. It was the body of a person, and he appeared to have drowned and was lying downwards on the sand, Kinsella said. He alerted his son, and the pair said the Lord's Prayer for the man before informing authorities of their discovery. Arthur Kinsella described the man as being around 65 years old, and when he placed his hand on the deceased's ankle, it was marble cold. Sergeant Terry McMahon noted that the man was strangely dressed for a swimmer. He had on a pair of purple striped swimming trunks, with his underpants over the top, and a navy t-shirt tucked into them. The man was pronounced dead at 8.10am, and his body was sent to Sligo University Hospital for an autopsy. McMahon and his colleagues searched the area and discovered a pile of clothes on a rock. They were all folded neatly on top of each other, but all had their labels cut out. No wallet, money or form of identification was found at the beach. The autopsy uncovered two surprising details. Even though the man was found washed up, he did not die of drowning. His cause of death was determined to be a heart attack. The man also had terminal prostate cancer, so severe that he only likely had a few weeks to live. There are signs of previous heart attacks, and he only had one kidney. For a man with such health conditions, it was surprising that he had no form of medication in his system. The medical examiner noted that the man would have been in immense pain. On the 12th of June, four days before the discovery of the body, a tall, thin, grey-haired man with glasses was captured on CCTV cameras at the Derry bus station. He was wearing a black leather jacket and carrying two black bags. He boarded the mid-afternoon bus to Sligo and was seen arriving in the town in the north of Ireland two and a half hours later. Upon arrival, the man hailed a taxi and asked the driver to take him to a cheap place to stay. At 6.52pm, he entered the Sligo City Hotel and was checked in by a receptionist. The man paid in cash, in full for three nights, and was allocated room 705. He stated his name was Peter Bergman, and his home address was Ein Stadison, 15, 4472, Vienna, Austria. Although it is required by law for hotels to check the ID of every guest, this was not done in this instance. On the 13th of June, Peter Bergman purchased eight 82 cent stamps and airmail stickers at the Sligo Post Office. He was also seen by hotel CCTV cameras coming and going throughout the day. Every time he'd depart, he would carry a purple plastic bag full of items, but when he returned, there was no bag. He would do this up to 13 times during his stay at the hotel. It is unclear if he had placed the bag in his pocket after dumping the items, or if he had just had a stash of them in his hotel room. The contents inside the bag also remain a mystery, as is the location of where Bergman disposed of them. On the 14th of June, Bergman with a map in hand approached another taxi, and asked if he knew any quiet beaches where he could go for a swim. The driver drove Bergman to Ross's Point Beach. The man exited the taxi and examined the area. He seemed pleased with the location and asked to be returned to the hotel. The taxi driver noted that Bergman was quite talkative and had told him that he was from Austria. The next day, Bergman checked out of the Sligo City Hotel at 1pm. He was carrying three bags, the two black ones he had arrived in town with, as well as a purple plastic one. He walked the short distance to the Sligo bus station, arriving at 1.32pm. At this point, he no longer was carrying one of the black bags, which many likely disposed of it on his way to the station. He purchased a cappuccino and toasted sandwich, and sat at one of the tables where he took a piece of paper from his pocket and wrote something on it, before tearing it up and putting it in a nearby bin. Peter Bergman bought a one-way ticket and boarded the bus to Ross's Point. Many beachgoers recalled seeing the overly dressed man throughout the day. At 4pm, he was seen on the beach with the black bag over his shoulder, and an hour later, he was spotted near the yacht club. At 9.10pm, two women saw the man, and 20 minutes later, a couple who had stopped to watch the sunset observed him walking parallel to the shore with his trousers rolled up to his knees. He was seen a few more times holding the plastic bag and wearing his glasses. The last sighting occurred at 11.50pm. Bergman was carrying the bag as he walked along the shore. 
High tide would be arriving in 30 minutes. The next morning, Arthur Kinsella would make the grim discovery. With no identification found at the scene, investigators questioned witnesses and checked the CCTV cameras to trace the deceased's movements back to the Sligo City Hotel. Here they discovered that the man found at the beach was Peter Bergman, but there was a problem. The address Bergman gave at the hotel, Einstedison 15 4472, Vienna, Austria, did not exist. No family members or friends came forward to claim they knew the man. Checks for missing people internationally turned up no results for the name or description leading detectives to believe that the name was given was also false and that the man had gone out of his way to conceal his identity. Police concluded that he wanted to disappear at sea, but for whatever reason, his remains were washed up onto the beach. The man was buried in an unmarked grave in Sligo Cemetery, his funeral attended by six people, the undertaker, grave digger, and four detectives. John O'Reilly, the detective inspector at the time, would state, There are so many unanswered questions that will probably never be answered, but the one I would love to get answered is, Who was Peter Bergman?